Mort Saul, who revolutionized stand-up comedy in the mid-1950s with his insightful political and social satire, has died at his home in Mill Valley, California, at 94. Saul, whose on and off stage preoccupation with a conspiracy theory on the assassination of President John F. Kennedy slowed his career in the late 1960s, died Tuesday, a family friend overseeing his affairs told the New York Times, at a time when brash comics in suits and tuxedos typically were telling jokes about their wives and mothers-in-law, Saul shattered the stand-up stereotype, beginning at the Hungry Eye, a small, brick-walled basement club in San Francisco's North Beach District. Wearing a v-neck sweater and an open-collared shirt, and clutching a rolled-up newspaper, the dark-haired USC graduate with hooded eyes and a wolfish grin fearlessly zeroed in on Cold War-era targets such as President Eisenhower, Senator Joseph McCarthy and the notorious House on american activities. His casual, conversational style would influence a generation of comedians, from Lenny Bruce to Dave Chappelle. Saul who frequently punctuated his punch lines with a dry, staccato laugh, spoke in a language that a writer for The New Yorker magazine in 1957 described as a unique cross between a philosophy paper and the argot of modern jazz. Indeed, Saul might leaven his monologues with allusions to the Oedipus complex or references to monotheism and then preface a new target by saying, dig this, or, more often, onward. He generally concluded shows by asking, are there any groups I haven't offended? Before Saul, it was heretical, even career suicide, for a comedian to discuss politics, much less to cut up a sitting president on stage, wrote Nachman. While Rogers and Bob Hope were comfortable, non-offensive establishment figures, Saul was straight grenade fire. When Rogers or Hope did political material, their jokes weren't meant to wound or to make anyone squirm, Saul's were, and did, Nachman said, 